Welcome viewers once again to TV Box Stop, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. On today's video, we have a new TV box and it's sporting the new M-Logic S905X2 CPU, running on Android 8.1 with DDR4 RAM. Presenting, the X96 Max, Android 8.1 4K TV box. This is the first box to feature this new chipset on my channel, so I'm quite curious to see how it performs. So stay tuned, because that's coming up next. Welcome back. So this is the box it comes in. This box doesn't come with the usual specs printed on the outside as seen on other high-end models, with the exception of the serial sticker that shows it's a 4GB 64GB model. And with that I'll just take a minute to do a quick unboxing. The X96 Max runs on the new quad-core M-Logic S905X2 CPU, running up to 2.0GHz. The GPU is the new Mali G31 single-core GPU, running up to 650 MHz. It comes with 4 GB of DDR4 RAM, and 64 GB of internal storage. It has dual-band 5 GHz Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 4.0 is supported. It has Ethernet LAN speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second, it has USB 3.0 support, and 5.1 digital surround sound audio. In the box, you have the X96 Max TV box itself. You get this infrared remote. The remote looks nice and will do well to navigate the basic functions of the box, however, in a few minutes you will see that this box comes with voice command features, and they should have included a voice remote in this package. With that said, you can purchase your own air mouse like this G10 model from Gearbest that offers omnidirectional air mouse and voice commands feature. A link to this product can be found in the description area. Other items in the box include one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter, and a user's manual. Let's see what ports we have on this box. The housing is made of plastic, with the X96 Max printed to the top. To the back, you have one HDMI port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, you get one optical audio port, one audio video port, and an infrared extender port. To the side, you have two USB ports, one is a USB 3.0 and the other is a USB 2.0. The other port is a micro SD card reader. There's nothing on the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And to the bottom, you have some ventilation holes. So I'll now connect it to my TV and continue with the rest of the review. So I'm back and all connected. In this video I would like to feature my newest cooling fan for TV boxes, the Evercool RCO2. It has many applications and different ways to use it, but in this instance I'm using it to cool TV boxes. If you're interested in this cooling fan, links are in the description area below this video for both Gearbest and Amazon, so be sure to check it out. When you start up the box for the first time, you'll be greeted by the X96 Max boot-up animation for a couple of seconds. Then you'll be taken to the launcher. The layout of the launcher has the same design of the Android TV version of Android 8.1, but it's not Android TV OS, it's the full version of Android with a skin to imitate the appearance of Android TV. The launcher comes with horizontal panels to scroll through your list of apps, and it also comes with a shortcuts bar located to the top. To add shortcuts to this bar, simply click on the add button and select or unselect any app you would like to add or remove. You also have the ability to manually arrange the order of your apps and shortcuts by simply pressing down on the OK button on the remote on any app or shortcut, and then using the direction keys to arrange the apps as you so choose. To the top of this launcher you have voice search feature, however, the included remote is an infrared remote that does not have the features to perform voice commands. 
The launcher doesn't come with a navigation bar or status bar for easy navigating with a mouse or touchpad keyboard. This makes operating the launcher a bit difficult with a mouse as there is no multitasking button for easy switching between apps. You can install an alternative launcher like the Nova Launcher, but there is no navigation bar or drag and drop feature. In the Apps section, you get pre-installed apps like AirPin Pro, App Installer, Chrome Browser, KD Player, Mobdro, Netflix, Google Play Store, and YouTube. You have a one-click firmware updates app, and a backup and restore app. There is no support for Miracast or Chromecast on this box, but you do have the AirPin Pro app for iOS devices. I will now install some more apps and games to complete my review. To begin testing the X96 Max, I will first run a Netflix video for a few seconds to see what's the highest quality we can get. As we perform our daily responsibilities, I confess I find some members of my fellow crew more interesting than others. Lieutenant Tyler has suffered so much and still maintains such dignity and kindness. Netflix plays up to 720p quality on this box which is quite watchable. However, it cannot play movies in HD or 4K because the box doesn't have the required Google Widevine Level 1 and HDCP encryption support. The same test applies to the YouTube app. It will take you to another world. Even though I ran a 4K YouTube sample I was only able to get up to 1080p quality. I installed the Android TV version of the YouTube app but it failed to run, and kept on crashing. I will pause the testing for a minute to take a look at its system information. Let's see if this box is rooted. It shows that the box is not rooted, running on Android 8.1 Oreo operating system. This restricts you to only apps that don't require root access to work, and it will require a firmware update to get this box rooted. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is M-Logic, and the model is the X96 Max. It comes with 4GB of RAM which is DDR4 memory, and this is the remainder of the storage after the Android installation and all the apps I have installed. The Bluetooth version here is 4 Plus, which indicates that the Bluetooth version is higher than Bluetooth 4.0 as listed. The CPU is a 64-bit Cortex-A53 quad-core CPU running up to 1.9 GHz in 32-bit mode. Below here it shows that the box has support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. The GPU is the single-core Mali G31 graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2. This is great news, because it means that this box will do great at playing games and 4K videos of all formats. Under Network, it shows that the box has dual-band 2.4 and 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 8.1 Oreo, and it also shows that the box is not rooted. Under Thermal information, it shows that the box runs between 45 to 50 degrees Celsius under normal room temperature, and this can rise up to 70 degrees under heavy activity. Applying a passive cooling fan like the Evercool RC02, will maintain a temperature between 30 and 40 degrees. This is actually really cool for a TV box of this class, and this shows that the new cooling fan has a major impact on this box's temperature. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos like H.264, HEVC, and VP9 decoding, and a couple of others all needed for the playback of 4K media. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's see what else you can do on this box. I will now run some 4K video samples directly off of my USB 3.0 flash drive, and I am doing this using the USB 3.0 port on the box.
most of the 4K samples ran really well, with two of the samples playing with some issues. Given that this box has Dolby Vision and digital audio capability, and with the CPU running at 1.9 GHz, I expected that it would have played the 4K samples flawlessly. Maybe it has to do with the fact that it was configured in 32-bit mode. So we just saw its performance in the 4K video playback. Let's see how the new G31 GPU performs in some treated gameplay. Describe some really exciting action here. Here's a chance to attack. Well that was a great gaming performance. The new Mali G31 with OpenGL ES 3.2 has much better 3D gaming performance over the previous Mali 450. And that's it for the live demonstrations. Let's now take a look at its benchmarks. First, I have the results of the RAM and internal storage read and write speeds. The X96 Max has a RAM copy speed of 3697 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 145 megabytes per second and a write speed of 111. These scores are higher than average scores for a TV box in this price range, and indicates that this box has fast data transfer speeds. And now I have the results of the Wi-Fi speed test. The results show that the X96 Max has very good Wi-Fi and LAN speed connection. It was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 40 megabytes on every try. I now show the results of the Antutu benchmark. And it shows that the X96 Max got a score of 59,275. This score is slightly higher than the score I got on the Eachlink Allwinner H6 TV box, which scored around 53,800. Next I have the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. The box scored 717 single-core, and 2135 multi-core. Again the score here being slightly higher than the Eachlink Allwinner H6. The final benchmark is the Ice Storm Extreme GPU benchmark. The X96 Max got a score of 5256. And once again it beat the Eachlink H6 by a thousand. In summary, the X96 Max definitely is a good TV box but it needs some improvements in the firmware. First of all the hardware specs are great. The new M-Logic S905X2 CPU and the Mali G31 GPU produced some great results, at least better than boxes on its previous version. It has 4GB of DDR4 RAM and 64GB of internal storage, and together with USB 3.0 support provides smooth running of apps, and excellent storage and data transfer speeds. It has very good Wi-Fi and LAN speed connection, achieving the maximum speed of my internet package. Streaming of movies and TV shows is good, and you have access to Netflix in standard quality, and YouTube in 1080p. The 4K video playback was good for the most part, and Treaty Gaming was also really good. The areas that need improvement solely has to do with the firmware. They configured the box in 32-bit mode when its hardware is based on a 64-bit chipset. The box is not rooted, and it only provides Google Widevine Level 3 support which limits Netflix to standard quality. The 4K videos played great for the most part with two videos having difficulty to play, there is no navigation bar or status bar on the interface, making it difficult to navigate with a mouse or touchpad keyboard. These issues can be corrected with a simple firmware update. To close off this review, I would like to state that the new Evercool cooling fan featured in this video performed great, resulting in really cool operating temperatures between 30 to 45 degrees during 4K video playback and during treaty gaming. If you are interested in this cooling fan, links can be found in the description area below this video. 
Well viewers there you have it. This was a review of the X96 Max Android 4K TV box. If you are interested in this box, links were placed in the description area directly below this video and on my website where you can get it at the lowest price online. Thanks for watching my video, if you like to help grow my channel be sure to share it on social media platforms, and to be notified when the next great TV box review is released, hit the subscribe button and the little notifications bell for more TV box stop videos. Thank you.